Hello, everybody. Well, it's been a rough couple days for me. Yesterday, I was diagnosed with cancer. I smoked my last cigarette about 36 hours ago after having been a smoker for 30 years, so um, it's been kind of rough. And on top of everything else, my AC in the house went on the fritz today. And we found out that my health insurance isn't very good, so I'm going to be on the hook for some really big bills coming up. So, with all that going on, on a day that I probably should have been working on orders, I decided to smash a little steel, just freehand, just for mental health purposes. Anyway, so we forged out a chef's knife. That's what I'm going to be doing in this video. It was an inch and a half wide, 1095 uh, high carbon steel. Did some of the work on the power hammer, did some of the work on the anvil. That blade's up in the annealing uh, vat right now. And hopefully when I get it finished and ground up, I can do a short video on it being completed. Anyway, if you're here watching, uh, appreciate you watching. Be sure and hit that like button. Be sure and subscribe for new content. Let's go smash some steel and uh, God bless and have a great day. All right, we're going to start out on the power hammer. Just drawing our bar of stock down to a point. I uh, hope you can hear me okay. I've got a fan running here in the house. Got to draw this point out fairly long. Really don't care if I get a really sharp tip or not because um, there's probably going to be a lot of grinding on this blade anyway. Because I intend to work this blade out to a really thin cross section, make a really good slicer out of it. Now, every bit of this could be done with it at the anvil, but it's absolutely too hot for me to be spending that time out here at the forge right now. So we're going to do some of the heavy work here on the power hammer. Work it down and make sure we've still got our width like it's supposed to be. And there you can see I just knocked a notch in to mark where I want my finger choil to be, the base of the blade to the handle. We're going to start forging that in. Just using a little bit of round stock to fuller in that uh, finger choil. It's getting close. Remember, every time you move the steel in one direction, it expands in another. So as I'm hammering that choil in, it makes it swell and I have to bring it back down to the right thickness. Now I'm working just the heel, just the heel of the blade under the power hammer. Same as I would do at the end, we're drawing the heel out first. You see that? Now I'm gonna work on drawing the bevels down on the rest of the blade to match the bevel I've got established on the heel. And this is just roughing the blade out. I'll do all the finish work on the anvil. Working down the blade. Drawing our taper from the spine down to the edge. Now we're going to hammer in a little distal taper. And the way my dies are worn, actually, they're not quite flat. And that's good for this process because that allows me to hammer that backward curve 
into the blade so that as I hammer the bevels out on the anvil, uh, the blade will come back straight and bend the other way. That's actually looking pretty good. I'm going to have to cut this off the parent bar stock before we go to the anvil though. So we've got it cut off and I'm just going to use that same piece of round stock and pull the handle down a little bit. I cut it off short and I'm going to stretch it for length because quarter inch is really too thick. I need to narrow it down a bit. There we go. All right, start out just adding a little curve to the handle, give it a little interest. Not really worried about doing it being too precise because like I said, this blade's gonna need a lot of grinding. Not because I can't forge it to finish, but because I want a very thin cross section on this blade. And Some of that's gonna to have to be done on the grinder. If I forge it too close to finish, I'll be running a risk of burning that edge through the rest of the heat treat. So I'm taking the hammer marks out, working my bevel down the blade from the spine to the edge. I've got the heel of the blade just about right. And we'll start working on out toward the tip. Taking out the hammer marks, forging in our bevel, trying to keep things as straight as possible as we go. Just a hammer width through, a little over a hammer width at a time. No need to be in a hurry. Gonna have to go back and clean that up a little bit, but not too bad. I have left the edge kind of thick so I can profile the edge a little better. And so it can stand the grinding I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna do on this blade. And you can see how that's kind of straightening out that curve that backward curve that was in the blade. It's gonna run the tip up and sweep the tip up just a little bit, which is what a chef's knife should be. Clean that bevel up a little more. I'm gonna to have to go back and clean up that edge profile. And since I've left it thick, I can actually do that on the anvil, where ordinarily I'd use a wooden block, but I've left it a bit thick. So there, we can get by with that. Just keep cleaning it up. Clean up our profile a little bit. It's actually looking pretty good. I'm gonna think I'm gonna have to hammer out toward the tip and work a little more taper into it. Make sure everything's straight. And I can fiddle with something like this for half a day, making sure everything's as straight as I want it. At the end of the day, it only needs to be as straight as you want it.
We've got that done, so I'm gonna stamp my touch mark in it. And there we go. She's pretty well straight. Right around nine inches of blade. That's a good length. And I'm pretty happy with that. Thanks for watching.